What are we as Christians supposed to do with this virus, with this COVID-19, uh, this novel version, this new version of coronavirus uh, labeled 2019 when the virus was discovered? Some people call it the China virus or the Chinese virus or the Wuhan flu. What are we as Christians supposed to do with this virus? What are we supposed to do with this world gone upside down? with a nation that many uh, municipalities and jurisdictions have banned even churches gathering together? What are we supposed to do in the face of supposed Christian brethren uh, condemning other brothers in Christ for holding services? When we see police uh, breaking up a church of 10 people using nine police officers to bust them up uh, because they were simply gathered together in a number of 10, what are we supposed to do with that? Are we supposed to, as some say, just blindly comply with government, basing that off of Romans 13, that says to submit to ruling authorities? Or should we take the path of Peter in the book of Acts, when Peter uh, refused to comply with the ruling authority? He refused to stay silent. He refused to have groups gathering together to hear the name of Christ proclaimed and the resurrection uh, of, the, of the Savior? Are we to take an extreme? Or are we to take a middle road? Is there such a thing as a fence riding position in Christianity? Well, that's something I'd like to briefly talk about this evening as we talk about this idea of what are Christians supposed to do? What is the Christian response to this virus? A well-known theologian uh, named N.T. Wright, uh, well-respected in many circles, uh, according to the brief bio I see on this article, N.T. Wright is the professor of New Testament and early Christianity at the University of St. Andrews, a senior research fellow at Wycliffe Hall, Oxford University, and the author of over 80 books, including the New Testament in its world. Uh, he's done a lot of pioneering work on uh, studying scripture in their context, as by the title of that book. Uh, but again, he's respected by many. And yet, in an article dated just a, a week ago, he, uh, the, he titled the article, Christianity Offers No Answers About the Coronavirus, It's Not Supposed To. I take great, uh, great exception to that statement. Does, corona, does the church have the answer? Can we say when this virus will run its course? Can we say who will die? Can we say when we'll die based on this virus? Absolutely not. And yet scripture says that not a one of us can add a day to our lives or even a moment to our lives by becoming anxious or worried or, or anything else. And so how are we to respond? Well, I will say this, I couldn't disagree with Mr. Wright uh, any more than I do. The reality is we as Christians do have the answer of coronavirus. That answer is to trust God. That answer is to say, with whether we pass from it or not, it's not for us to say. But God knows our time is appointed. It is appointed under man wants to die and then the judgment. We have no control over our time or day of death. We just don't. And so let's ponder on something for a minute. How are we to respond? What message are we to carry to this world after all, the Bible doesn't mention viruses. The Bible doesn't mention coronavirus. But the Bible's pretty clear about what our attitude is supposed to be. And the one that I think is most glaring here is we're supposed to not be afraid. We're not supposed to fear. So in Scripture, Paul wrote to young Timothy in 2 Timothy, To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you even as I recall your tears, so that I may be filled with joy. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you, through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. The last part of that's interesting. Paul lays out the case that 
both through uh, Timothy's experience as well as his time with Paul, even the laying on of hands, that ordination type setting. It's a reminder to be about the Lord. You know, Paul mentioned the longing to see him, as I'm sure many of us are who can assemble together with the local church. But here we are in this last part, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, of fear, of anxiety. God hasn't given us that, but God does, through his Holy Spirit, give us the uh, power of love and discipline. Love and discipline. Discipline, doing what's right, doing things within the right context to be reasonable in what we do, and power. Power to stand true, power to stand firm, power to say we will do what God has called us to do. That's the reminder here. And so again, when N.T. Wright says that Christianity does not offer any answers about coronavirus and it's not supposed to, quite the contrary. All of Scripture tells us there's an answer. We know that the virus, whether, whether how, wherever it originated, we know the virus is just another one of the many symptoms of the fall that went all the way back to Adam and Eve. We know that it's one of the many forms of pestilence and whatever you want to add to it that is the result of sin. Now, whether this is an actual biblical judgment on mankind, well, that remains to be seen. But we do know that God doesn't allow anything to happen in this world outside of His will. And so He will use it. In fact, He's using the Word of God boldly through formats that hadn't even been used to this level because of the virus. And so we know that God is using all these things. But here's something to think about. If Christianity has one answer to this virus or any other trial we face, is that we can stand firm in our faith if we know Christ Jesus as our personal Savior, if we know God as the creator of the universe, our Lord and Savior, then we can trust him. He is sovereign. He does hold our lives in his hands, and we're not going to add another day to our lives just by getting anxious. But I want to cling to this, and this is actually from the New King James. I normally uh, read from the NASB, but I, I happen to memorize this particular passage in the New King James uh, in a choral setting. But from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, we have probably the most appropriate instructions for Christians today especially in dealing with a virus or dealing with the trials of life, dealing with job loss, dealing with whatever may come politically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever may come, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 gives us the answer. So N.T. Wright was wrong. Christianity and the Bible does offer something. And here's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Don't get wrapped up in hype. Don't get wrapped up in propaganda. Don't get wrapped up in he said, she said, or conflicting experts. Just simply trust God. When we strike out on our own or make rash assumptions and rash decisions, failure is typically on the horizon. I look at the Old Testament and when uh, Joshua was leading the people into the Holy Land, into, into the Promised Kingdom, and they had a great victory in their very first uh, encounter. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down by the mighty hand of God, and they were excited, they rejoiced, and then they got full of themselves and took their own initiative and just went on to the next city like they were going to win again. But they didn't take it to God first. They didn't wait for God's instructions. They didn't wait for His path or purpose. They simply took it on themselves, took bad advice, and got devastated in the next town. What happened? They didn't trust the Lord with all their heart. They leaned on their own understanding. Whether it's knee-jerk responses by politicians to this virus, whether it be knee-jerk responses by the people willing to give up their freedom even to assemble together as the local church, Whatever the case may be, when we make rash decisions not following what the Lord says, we're going to have problems. We're going to set ourselves up for failure. Do it the Lord's way. Trust Him, follow Him in all His ways, and He will direct your paths. It couldn't get more simple than that. So the answer Christianity has to COVID-19 or any other trial is to trust the Lord. That's it. 
And so I pray that you'll take this to heart, that you will remember that God is in control. Nothing takes him off his throne, not a virus, not a politician, not a wicked king wanting people to bow down to a statue. Nothing takes God off of his throne. He is in control. Trust him. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Have a blessed evening.